Joshua, it is percolating as it does in every viral and bacterial pandemic. And it's really not in the headlines, but it's in the mystery and minds of all. And that is a question of viral reinfection, viral mutation, and the idea of how we will respond infected or not infected to the virus in the future. What is the current reading and belief that you have? So I think the current reading is, like with most viral infections, there will be some degree of immunity, particularly for people who experience illness. How much and for how long is not known. And it's <clears> also not known which tests will really capture that. So I don't think um, there is a concern that this will behave very, very differently than everything else. But there's a desire to really understand the specifics before making <laughs> policy. The glide paths are clearly getting better. When do we get to where we flatten the curve? I mean, if you extrapolate out any given of the myriad logarithmic glide paths, are we flattening the curve in days, weeks, or does it take months to flatten a curve to be like New Zealand? Well, New Zealand is going to be a high bar for places that have so much virus and particularly where there's a lot of um, people living together, you know, in dense areas. So I think the curve may look different in different places. And, you know, model will model one thing one way, but what actually happens may, may be different and the models will have to be adjusted. So I think we're learning what it's like on the other side of the peak of the curve which is better than being on the front side of the curve and not knowing when it's going to stop rising, but is still, um, you know, a lot of uncertainty about when we'll be able to return to normal life. Josh, what are the new studies get, that give us more of an indication of what drugs actually are used, um, rightly so, in, in order to combat COVID-19? I know th there's more evidence on hydrochloroquine. Yeah, hydroxychloroquine has not been um, being shown to work in different studies um, and may even be dangerous, although mm -hmm. the best, high, most high-quality studies really haven't been published for that. Um, and uh, there's uh, also a whole bunch of studies coming out on from Desivir, which is an antiviral drug, um, that have yet to come out. Um, and there will be some studies, I think, in the relatively short term about the effectiveness of convalescent plasma. And there may be others that, that come out. I think we're going to hit a period where there will be a lot of studies coming out. And, you know, it's important to look at different things, not just the overall result, but if there is an effect, how big an effect, at what point in the illness is the study being done, because there could be a medication that works very well early, but not so well late, or vice versa. There's going to be a lot of information coming out. And, you know, what I'm going to be doing is looking at people who really understand viral illness and how to treat it to kind of interpret all the different studies that are will be around. But, Josh, how long does it take to actually understand all of the unintended consequences of, of a drug? And as you rightly say, at what stage they should be administered? Are, are we three months, six months to, to better understand it? Well, you know, for a particular drug, it depends the studies that are available, you know, and how they all get uh, looked at together. But I think it's a, for many of these, it'll be months, not many months, but months, not weeks or days. Um, but I think we will know more about what works and at what <clears throat> point in the course of the illness. Right. What is Joshua Sharfstein's social distance? I guess we've arbitrarily said it's six feet or, you know, whatever it is. What's your social distance when you're trotting around? Um, I just try to steer clear from people as much as I can. You know, I'm obviously wearing a mask if I think I'm going to encounter somebody along the way, um, um, headed to the grocery store or something like that. But, <clears throat> you know, and I also am uh, somewhat obsessive about washing my hands before and after, bringing hand sanitizer with me, you know, the, the usual. It's um, yeah. it's really a, um, a challenge to kind of keep it top of mind, but I think it, that challenge is getting a little easier with the passage of every day. You know, I think it will be for quite a while that we're a little bit, you know, that, that we're going to have to change our routines, and uh, you might as well start now. <clears throat> 